so tell me guys last class we had discussed about the polymorphism right so any doubt on polymorphism guys so that we can proceed on other topics i'll give interview questions also some some interview questions also is there so i'll share this okay just please go through this uh, all the interview questions which i have given and if any doubt is there in the question any questions which is not understanding clearly the answers so then we can discuss it tomorrow i'll share this document today okay let's close it let's go to uh, polymorphism it is done right polymorphism yeah polymorphism is done now let's go to abstraction okay so abstraction means yeah polymorphism means the main two things that you need to remember guys in case of polymorphism that is method overloading and over riding so what is overloading guys just simply give us some definition or some whatever the understanding that you people have can you tell me someone what is over loading means so let me give the simple terms okay so let's say already how method is there already have one method so if you are writing overriding that method by giving the same name sorry overloading means method name is same okay but we will write method name is same with the different types of uh, parameters and different number of parameters okay now already have one method so with that method name method name is same again okay and you will write the same method by changing the number of parameters or type of parameters number of parameters are type of parameters then we'll call it as a method overloading okay now overriding means over riding means method name is method name we have written one method in the super class okay same method we will write in the subclass same method we will write in the subclass by modifying the implementation as per our requirement as per our requirement then we'll call it as a method overriding over riding okay beyond you can just simply read it when a class has more than one method with the same name but different parameters then we'll call those methods are overloaded methods okay overloaded methods will have same method name same method name but a different number of arguments are different type of arguments so the change with the one method to other method is other method is only number of parameters or type of parameters is different okay rest of thing is same okay next over riding so when already you have created one class with some method okay and if i want to reuse that method then i need to extend that class okay in super class then there is one method so in the subclass that implementation whatever we have done in the super class is not satisfying our requirement then in that case in the subclass we will override that method we will override the method which is there already in the super class method then we will call that as a overrided method or overridden method overridden method which you have written in the subclass okay now next go to abstraction okay abstraction means normally we will provide the functionalities normally we will provide uh, giving the functionalities and inheriting properties all those things we will call it as a inheritance and polymorphism but in case of uh, abstraction we will not uh, will not provide any implementations all those things we will not provide any implementations and all those things it is of idea it is of a dealing with an ideas rather than events okay normally here what we are doing we are providing implementations and then getting the subclasses super class and then overriding creating object all those things that we are doing but in case of abstraction what we are doing is like it is of a, rather than 
events will do only ideas so normally abstraction means it is of hiding the unwanted details hiding the unwanted details and showing only the required functionality will call it as a abstraction okay let's say for example we are using up some mobiles okay using of mobile so if you are adding some sim with some number with some mobile number if you are dialing up some number means then automatically the receiver will receive the call okay we are able to communicate with other persons okay now so if you want to our functionality is only what is our required i need to call to other receivers okay by using their mobile number but you don't want to know all the internally how exactly the call is going to other receivers okay that is of hiding the implementation details and let's say for example if you want to send some mail to the receivers okay if you want to send up some mail to some receivers okay then in that case what you need you need of the send receivers email id okay that is enough and we can body we can construct of in the body and then we can send you okay internally it will send that body content to the receivers but we don't know how it will send it that we don't want okay our functionality is only to verify that whether that uh, our requirement is satisfying or not sending email okay now let's read that abstraction is an uh, abstraction is is a, is the quality of uh, dealing with ideas uh, rather than events uh, let's say for example of uh, whenever you consider an email okay whenever you consider in case of email complex details of uh, uh, such as like uh, what happen as soon as when you send an email okay so internally if you are sending some email means uh, something some server host all those things is required right so email server and then what is the username password all those things uh, that internally it will connect with that email server and then it will send the mails okay so let's you send an email the protocol and email server uses that hidden from the user okay internally it will use of some protocol also right and email server to send the email okay therefore to send an email you just need to type the content and then mention the address of receiver and then click on send so that can be done by anyone right if you know the functionality okay but internal things what exactly it is doing that is not required for us okay that is called abstraction okay let's say we will take off some example like object oriented programming abstraction is the process of in object oriented programming abstraction is the process of hiding the implementation details from the user only the functionality will be provided to the user okay now let's say you are using of facebook okay facebook instagram you are using right so instantly you people may use of getting the request to others okay and someone is you are approving whether they request or not or sending some messages right internally so all those some comments all those things are going internally right but what is your requirement you need to give some comment to some other users okay some other clients so that is happening so that's what internally how it is sharing the content all those things that is internal things okay that is not required for that we will call it as a abstraction okay next in other words the user will have the information about what the object does instead of how it will do so you need of what does you want that only you should know that so how it is going to do that is not required for us okay now abstraction is how to achieve the abstraction in java how to achieve the abstraction in java means by using abstract classes and interfaces okay we can achieve the we can achieve the abstraction by using abstract classes and interfaces what is abstract class what is abstract class let's take off one example let's take off one example means now will use of banks okay state bank hdfc bank access bank ics bank there are a lot of banks is there right okay so each bank each bank their own rate of interest right let's say you are doing of some 10 lakhs deposit okay so the each bank to bank there may be some difference in in case of giving rate of interest to the 
deposits right or not so the implementation whatever the their own customers hdfc customers have their own implementation hdfc okay and icc have their own implementation and uh, like uh, sba have their own implementation while giving off uh, the rate of interest amount okay and let's say if you are doing off some withdraw money okay let's say you are doing off uh, some withdrawing of some money from the bank then sometimes maybe if you are uh, if you are withdrawing more than one lakh or two lakh uh, sometimes they may charge up some amount also okay as per their policies uh, they will charge some amount also okay that also will vary from bank to bank okay and let's say for example common thing let's say you want to print off some balance you want to print off your balance so you want to print whatever the balance that is currently in the account okay there is no charges for that to print off the message okay there is no nothing whatever that is there in the account balance that simply we can display for that there is no calculations required that is common for all banks right for that we can provide of implementation and rest of things we can give as abstract methods okay whoever is going to provide implementation for the other method abstract methods they will provide according to their bank bank rules and specifications now let's see the example abstract class bank abstract class bank as part of this we have one method called abstract method guys so get rate of interest get rate of interest this method is a abstract method and one more method withdraw money and giving of some amount okay so this is also abstract method so and there is one more method wide print balance this method is provided implementation okay we have two abstract methods compulsory in that case the class must be declared as abstract okay who will provide implementation for these two means the whoever want to use of this class whoever want to use of this class they are responsible to provide implementation for the abstract methods that are present in bank abstract class okay now see class sbi so extending of bank so bank contains of three methods out of three methods two abstract methods one implemented method so for these two methods we are provided implementation okay get rate of interest in sbi bank is 8% that giving just assume and withdraw balance is withdraw you are trying to withdraw some money from your account then return some amount okay so this method implementation is access bank sbi bank and uh, fc bank if you want you can do your own implementation okay now whenever you are calling of that whenever you are calling of the method now see bank b i created only one object b equal to new sbi b equal to new sbi b dot get rate of interest means it will give the SBI rate of interest and same B I am assigning to again to the Access Bank. Okay, then it will give off yes Access Bank a related rate of interest. Now let's go to the class and then we'll write off some example. Let's write it package. Yes, the abstracts. Abstraction. Do that. Yeah. Plus. You can write off. Or you can copy paste that, and then okay, you can utilize it. Just copy paste it, and uh, bank. Sheet. Edit. That's it. Now, next uh, create another classes again. Ex by extending that bank abstract class. Okay, let's create a for class again. SBI. Okay, and extend super class is normal by default. It is object class. Now I'm extending a for what is that bank? Just select the bank. And finish it. 
so automatically this code is coming either you can write like this or directly if you are extending this is the normal class if you are extends okay and bank it will give up some error and then we need to provide unimplemented methods even this is also fine anything is fine it is overriding of all the unimplemented methods the print method is already implemented so that is not added here now let's delete it rate of interest you can call it as a seven percent some amount it is going to withdraw some thousand okay like create one more class more class of hdfc and browse of bank okay now let's finish it see automatically the extended is bank and then we are getting of the two unimplemented methods with the overrided get of eight percent is a from just assume some amount is with the drawing okay now now write one class that uses uh, this hdfc and uh, sbi that uses this sbi and uh, hdfc classes Boolean class test with the main method yeah now so first what i am doing i am creating a uh, bank object just a declaration i am doing okay so for this uh, I am assigning of a bank B equal to new HDFC. New HDFC. Internally, it will create of object of HDFC bank class and internally that will be assigned to the super class because a bank is a super class for a HDFC class. A super class can store any of its subclass reference. Okay. Now, system.out.println rate of interest rate of interest in hdfc is fc is remove it and add of b dot get rate of interest okay and give off some percentage requirements you are simply assigning of b equal to new sbi okay. now so let's copy paste of this line instead of writing again b dot get rate of interest again now it is of sbi now let's run it according to that whichever the method that we are created for that so as per that it will call that rate of interest method and then it will return off uh, that one so from this you should understood that you should understood uh, so abstraction means uh, it is of hiding the internal implementation details uh, and showing only the required functionality to the users okay now so while you are uh, while we are doing of uh, abstraction okay there is some important points that we need to remember that okay so when Whenever you are creating a abstract class, compulsory it must be declared with abstract keyword. So if abstract methods in the class means compulsory it should be abstract with abstract keyword. Okay, and it can have a non-abstract methods or concrete methods also. It can it can have. Let's say this is a class, right? So if this is there means if these two are not there means it cannot give of any error. Right or not? Because the uh, this method contains this class contains only the Im implemented method. There is no abstract methods. Okay, and even though this class can make it as abstract, no issue. Okay, abstract, A B S T R E, abstract. Okay, we can make a class. If you don't want to allow to create object of a bank class, then you can make that class as abstract. Okay, and when it is required again. So if a class contains of some methods, unimplemented methods, some unimplemented methods is there, just assume. Unimplemented method means, so without body, if any method is there, then 
we are that methods will call it as a abstract method abstract method if the class contains any abstract method means must and should class declared as abstract okay see or is it abstract okay. now and it can have constructors and methods also constructor and static methods also constructor means let's say bank of bank of so system dot out at print ln bank class constructor okay constructor so when this class will execute guys this constructor will execute guys when this class will execute guys let's make it up if i am uh, at the time of creating object in the subclasses yes subclasses now let's go now how many times this constructor will execute this time in this case how many times that uh, constructor of bank class will execute or will it execute will it execute or not first i'm creating up yes exactly so the reason is in this line internally it will call off the bank class again in this class in this time also it will create that let's see see first bank class constructor is called and hdfc uh, class object is created okay this is finished next again we are creating of sba class object right so internally it will create of bank class object and then it will come to sba class object okay and same way we can add of and methods also static methods also we can add it okay now let's some points is there yeah so important points is like an abstract class can abstract class must be declared with abstract keyword must be right okay it's not optional it must be so it can have abstract and non abstract methods in our class how many abstract methods is there guys so this is abstract class so but all our abstract methods are in a unimplemented implemented method is there all our abstract methods are any implemented method is available in the class in our abstract class that means for satisfying of second point it can have abstract and non abstract methods so for that point these are abstract methods this is non abstract method okay next it can have constructors and static methods also we have constructor is added if you want you can give off static methods also static void m1 just assume for test method This is also one static method okay we can write static methods as well as constructor it won't give any error next it can have final methods which will force the subclass to not change the body of the method let's say in this class you want to create one method but you don't want to allow that method should be overridden by subclasses you don't want to overridden by subclasses then let's say for example you have created a implementation for void print balance right if you don't want to if you don't want to allow to override this print balance method in the subclass means then we can make this as a final if you are trying to override that method if you are trying to override the print balance method it will not allow that it will not allow that let's go and see i'm writing of a same method so what it is saying cannot override the final method from bank whatever the method that is added in the implementation added in the super class bank class so that you can't modify that okay that's what it is telling okay that's what the abstraction guys okay 
now we are moving to encapsulation we are moving to encapsulation so what is mean by encapsulation is it clear guys first abstraction yeah go ahead so, second point let me so it can have abstract and non abstract methods is it or so one more point i missed it it cannot be instantiated so which point you want the second one yeah okay good so abstract method means a class let's say if i'm creating some class let's say let's create a class okay just any class so in the lobby yeah now so what i'm doing i created one class okay it is a implemented class there is no abstract right so i can head off void m1 okay this is of implemented method right the body is there which one screen oh sorry guys let me stop presenting Is it clear now? Is it able, are you able to see now? Okay. Now let's make it. Yeah. So just assume I have created one simple class. Okay. I have created one simple class and then I have created one method. Okay. To call this method, to call this method, compulsory we need to create a object of A class and then we can call. Correct or not? Right? Object of A class, A equal to new A. And then through this small A dot, M1 means we can call up this method. Correct or not? This is normal way. Created one class, one method. So if you want to call up this M1 method, we are creating object of that class in the main method and then we are calling. So if you don't want to create object of A class, if you don't want to allow directly to create of object of A class, okay? then we can make this class as abstract make this class as abstract then in this case we can't create object of class a we can't see it is giving a error a it cannot instantiate of type a because it is a abstract class we can't create object for the abstract classes okay that is what the third point is it clear this point third one now Coming to the second point, it can have abstract and non-abstract methods. No, I'm saying this is a non-abstract method. Why it is saying non-abstract method? Because we are provided implementation. Implementation means open bracket and close bracket is there for the method means. Then we can say it is a implemented method. Implemented method. Let's say I'm writing of void m2. M to and then added semicolon at the end added semicolon at the end okay then we can say it is a then we can say this is a yeah then we yes then we can say m2 as m2 as abstract method open to this I'll see uh what this method requires a body instead of a semicolon what i did then in this case we need to make it as a abstract here stra abstract then the error is gone okay now so from this this is a non abstract method this is a abstract method that's what the second point a abstract class can have non abstract methods as well as uh, abstract methods so it means the abstract class the meaning of that it can have abstract as well as a non abstract method so in the in this class uh, this is a non abstract method or implemented method this method will called as a abstract method okay
Is it clear the second point, guy? Who asked that question? Abstract and non-abstract means non-abstract means implemented methods. Or we can say impli implemented. On abstract or implemented methods. Okay. Or, yeah, go ahead, please. Yes, correct. M1 is implemented method. Method. This one will call it as a, this one will call it as a abstract method, not non abstract method or implemented method or concrete method or concrete method also. Concrete method, okay. And if your method name, method contains abstract keyword, then simply you can treat that as a abstract method. Simply you can treat that as a abstract method, okay. If any one method out of 10 methods, just assume there in the class, okay. Out of 10 methods, at least one method if you are making as abstract means, then that class must and should be as must and should contains uh, abstract then the class must and should declare with uh, abstract keyword otherwise uh, it will give off error otherwise it will give error okay it will not accept that is it okay yeah now next next is encapsulation next is encapsulation sorry <clears throat> encapsulation encapsulation means normally a class can contains a class can contains what are all things guys just assume a class can contains variables right methods correct or not any class can contains variables and equal to just assume sorry int i equal to Hundred. So, what this class here contains? Variable and method. Correct or not? This class contains variable and method. So, how can you say? How can you make this class as encapsulated? How to make the class as encapsulated means binding, binding of data. Binding of data means this members. Binding of data and its corresponding methods. Binding of corresponding data and its methods into a single unit. Let's say, for example, so I'm creating of, I'm creating of int a int b equal to 200 or just simply declare it. That's it. Even declare it. Okay. Now, there are some methods also is there. How to get the value of i? To set the value of a, they need some methods. Okay. But directly, I will I don't want to allow to access of these values. Okay. To access of normally in previous case. In previous case, just assume 100 is there. Just to create of object of main method. Sorry, class A. A equal to new A. In this case, to get the value of i variable, how to get that value of i variable, guys? A dot i. Correct or not? A dot i means will I get i value or not? I created of variable a and one method. Right? So I'm, I have created of a class object and I'm calling of either i variable or m1 method. Anything that I can. Right? A dot m1 method. Right? Let's run it. Right? Now, what I'm telling now, I don't want to access my variables. I don't want to access my variables directly through object. Directly through object, I don't want to allow to access my variables. Okay. Then in that case, what we will do is like, let's see that part. Now, binding of variables and Corresponding its methods into a single unit is nothing but encapsulation. Now let's instead of int a equal to int r sorry int i equal to some variable okay int j equal to one more variable just assume okay 
int k equal to one more variable. Okay. So to set the data to get the data, we need up some methods for these variables. Now right click on the code, right click on the class, go to source, generate setters and getters. Generate setters and getters. There is some option is there to generate the code. See automatically the code is generated by eclipse okay if you want to set the value for the int variable i variable we have a method called control o set i set see set i method is there set i set j set k all the for all the variables we can set by using setter methods we can all for all the methods we can get the data by using getter methods now let's see we have a setter methods is there get c get of j get of j get of i get of k okay get k so to set the values to get the data we will use of methods only setter methods and getter methods only and we need to make this and we need to make this variables as private if you are not making the variables as private then even the by using of this object directly we can set the data okay now let's see this private okay now if you want to call the any of these variables okay directly we can't call these variables we need to set the data we need to get the data by using only methods by using these methods only we can set the data we can get the data now let's if you want go to some other class class just create b okay create b class now if you are creating a object of a a equal to new a so inside this a class how many things we have guys we have three variables and some methods is there right now let's see a dot i a dot i system dot out dot print ln let's yeah a dot i so is it give it is giving error right or not it is giving of error so we can't get the value directly by using object that variable value directly we can't access that variable value so if you want to get a i value then we must and use we must and should use a dot get i method a dot get i method if you want to get off i value if you want to get the j value system dot out dot print ln of a dot get j get j method will call it for same way for a dot get k okay now to get the value before that we need to set some value right right now just we created object and we don't have default values also how to set the data there are some methods is there a dot set a dot set of i a dot set of set i so give that value internally it will call off this method set of i it is accepting of some integer value okay now just assume give some 100 okay and if you want to set the value for j if you want to set the value for j means a dot a dot set j okay and give some value a dot set k give some value okay now we have set the data for these variables see internally set i method internally i am passing some value that value where it is going by using this dot i means this value by using this dot i whatever that value that for that the value whichever we are passing in the parameter method parameter that value it is setting okay to get this value we will use of we will use of get i method that will return return of i this value return i is returning back see it is of type int now let's go to set values is done and get values we are doing in the below methods now let's run it see 100 200 300 or else i value 
पे जे वैल्यू नेक्स्ट के वैल्यू okay now yeah this is now we will come to know easily what is the i value j value k value see i value is 100 j value is 200 k value is 300 so did i set uh, any directly the value normally in case of before case in case of uh, in this case so how to set the value normally directly we will use of a dot i a dot j let's say or else for suppose if i am removing this if i am removing private i am removing private then directly i can call that directly i can call that system dot out dot ptl enough a dot i see it is visible now it is visible that public default members a dot i okay default value is zero default value is zero before that let's I value from object okay. now see in this case it is it will print zero the first one is it is giving as a zero we are not setting the data right now if your same value if I am getting after this line after this line then that will print as actual value that is setting is 100 is coming so but i don't want to access my variables like this i don't want to access my variables by using directly object dot variable name i want to restrict that okay i want to restrict that access so how to access and setting that data and getting the data is for this for this i value i have created two methods one is setter method one is getter method to set the value for this variable i will use of set i method to get the value of i variable i will use of get i method okay but directly i cannot access this variable that's i don't want to do that okay that's what we are doing in case of uh, that's what we are doing in case of encapsulation we are providing security for the our variables okay we are providing security now let's go and read the document see the process of the process of binding means combining means related methods for the variables these are the methods i am binding okay so binding data and corresponding methods into a single unit called single unit is nothing but encapsulation let's go on so for this variable for this data i data so the corresponding methods are set i method and get i methods okay the corresponding methods i variable and corresponding methods into a single unit is nothing but encapsulation okay in encapsulation the variables of class the variables of class will be hidden from the other classes so let's see whatever the variables that i have in tie in t in t j and in t k these variables i cannot access i cannot access in b class i cannot access in b class the reason is those i made it as a private even i don't want to allow access my private variables okay so how can i access those them how can i access those variables data means through methods only through methods only we need to allow so the variables of class will be hidden from other classes and can be accessed can be accessed only through methods only through methods of their current class okay so this is nothing but data hiding is also known as data hiding also we'll call it as how to achieve how to achieve encapsulation 
how to achieve encapsulation means uh, compulsory the class members will be declared as private okay because so you don't want to allow to access your private data members outside of the class then how to get the data and set the data for those variables means uh, using of setter methods and getter methods to specific to that variable okay now public provide sorry provide public setter and getter methods uh, to modify and to view the variable values to view variable values we will use of setter methods and getter methods only okay directly we can't use the variables now let's see the example one more see so i have created a one class employee class employee id employee private string employee name private double salary so all the members of the employee class all the members of employee class i made as private okay all the members of this class i made as private let's create of any sample class one more employee okay just add some three variables i have added of three variables all three employee id okay emp id just assume we can emp emp name and salary okay emp name and so now we need to generate setters and getters how to generate the setters and getters for these variables guys how to generate yes sir. right click go to source and we need to select off which one generate setters and getters yes we need to use of setters and getter methods and click on finish so if you want method for if you want comment for each body then click on this checkbox and then finish it for each method it will generate comment also okay this is for returning the employee id okay this is for setting the employee id okay to set the employee id this method so like that it will generate comments also okay now let's go to some other class go to some other class and create an create of employee object create employee object let's create it employee E equal to R EMP equal to new employee. Okay. Now, so if I want to get off EMP dot, I want to get the some value to set the data and to get the data. I need to use of only methods. Don't use directly the variable values. You can't access them directly because those are private. Okay. To set the employee ID, set EMP set emp there is one method called emp id pass one two three four five okay next emp dot set name set emp name then we can say it is a puja just assume okay next emp dot set salary just assume some ten thousand okay now to get the data of this employee object to get the data of employee object which is there inside employee ID name and salary we need to use only methods okay emp dot get employee id emp dot get employee ID. directly you can write this statement in the system data or whatever the employee ID that is it is going to return you can store in some variable also eid okay so and then system dot outer ln emp id is you that variable eid okay this is within the class through getter method only i got the value and that value i'm storing in some variable just a local variable that value i'm printing here either we can do in a r Directly system dot out dot print enough emp dot get name 
mp dot get employee name it will directly it will print the value okay even we can do like this also employee employee name okay next employee salary employee salary okay now emp dot get salary okay so this is of getting that value and then keeping some variable or directly you can print also okay both the ways we can do see employee id is this one okay Employee ID, employee name, salary, all are coming. So through setters and getters only we are getting the data. Okay. Nowhere we are using the variables. Even if you are trying also, even if you are trying also, we can't access them. Let's say, yeah, see, only that uh, variables, we can't see that. We can't see the variables of uh, employee name. If you are trying, just see. EMP dot variable see it is giving error the field employee name the field employee name is not visible so because that is private member that is private member we can't it is not uh, visible to the other classes the private members are uh, visible only within the class we can't access uh, out of the class okay now let's go back yeah now oh, this is what uh, encapsulation okay now so when we'll call it as a see, see already in the program i have seen i have given these are class so the program to test encapsulated class of employee so create of employee class and then set the values by using setter methods and get values through getter method so in this case what i'm doing is i'm doing in a single line everything I'm writing everything in single line, guys. Even we can write multiple ways or single line also. Or if you want, or if you want everything in single line, okay? There is a method called two string method. There is a method called two string method. So how to generate that method? Now right click on the file, go to source. There is a Two string method generate two string method. There is a method is there, right? Click on that. So for which all fields you want the two string method object. Okay. So employee ID, employee name, salary. For these three values, whenever I'm printing my employee object, so I want to print off employee ID, name, and salary. Okay. Click on finish. See, it is generated of one method, two string method. Whenever you are printing off, whenever we are printing the two string uh, employee it will internally it will call off a two string method and it will print the data whatever that is there employee ID name and salary let's go on to that also okay now already the data is seted okay while getting the data i don't want to do call off multiple methods so simply print emp What it is printing? Employee with employee ID, employee name, and salary. All is printing. Okay. If you want specific methods, okay. If you want to get up specific values, you don't want of all entire object, then you can use up that methods getter methods. That's what we can. If you want specific values, either employee ID or employee name or salary, then in that case, we can use of the specific methods of that employee class method. If you want of entire method, then we can use of all the object by using two string method, all the whatever the parameters that is there in the employee object, all that by we can display by using two string method, we can get that object data. Okay, that's what this Mm, encapsulation so is there any doubt guys i'll repeat it up to now this is the common things that we will do guys 
okay the properties will be private and will generate of setters and getters everywhere mostly will use 99 percent will use this only okay means we are doing of any model class means will make the properties as private and will generate the setters and getters okay so this is anywhere 99.99 percent .99 will do off like this only okay any doubt guys yeah two string method so what we are doing two string method what we will do it will do is like uh, normally to print the instead of uh, instead of uh, object uh, let's delete this okay comment it if i am printing object normally so if i am creating employee object i created of uh, employee object uh, it will print the hash code of the employee object if you are simply here simply run this it will print the hash code see it is object what it is in the employee object it contains of some hash code right employee dot hash code normally it will print of hash code of that okay internal it contains it is of object so by seeing that this object you will will you understood anything so actually in internally employee object contains what data internally employee contains employee id is there employee name is there salary is there right or not correct guys employee internally employee class contains three parameters employee id employee name and salary so what is the use of these three to set the data to get the data correct now if i am creating employee object and i set the data okay if i want to print this way i am printing this employee object okay without string method then it will print the object it will print object it will not print the data employee id employee name salary it will not print it will print in the form of object only okay it will print like this by seeing that we can't understand right what is what data is there inside this if you want to see the data if you want to see the data what is there in the employee object okay without calling get method, getter methods then two string method will print the what data is there inside this object this data is contains of employees employee id is 1 2 3 4 5 employee name is puja employee salary is 10000 is there in employee object do you want to print okay then if you are adding the two string method if you are adding two string method in the employee class then instead of printing the object like this it will print the data in the form of what the data is exactly it is there like this okay this we can modify also okay this we can modify it see employee id employee name this we can what however you want you can do this one we can modify this it doesn't matter okay then employee id it will print employee name it will print salary okay before that if you want uh, simply emp id so instead of bracket all those things you don't want means then this time it will display in different form so instead of object if you want to data that is there in the object then it will print in that format okay normally if the employee class does not having two string method the it will print the object okay but it will not print the data which is there in the object if you are using two string method then it will print the data or content inside the object clear you ask this question two string method will print the content or data present in the object okay yeah that's what the oops concept guys okay now tomorrow we will discuss of a string class okay string is very very important okay object first i'll explain some time object class java dot lang package and then we'll move to string class okay it contains of string string buffer and string binder string builder all those things okay so 
that's what for today's class guys any doubt means i can explain else we can wind up the class and then we'll meet tomorrow okay guys yeah thank you guys we'll meet tomorrow bye